Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder. We're doing something exciting. We're going to be talking about Girl from Nowhere, which is a series on Netflix, which I'm obsessed with right now. I can't stop watching it. I've got issues. And on top of that, we are making... Luvon cookies. Do you know how many times <laughs> I watched that pronunciation video? First of all, this is a New York City bakery that's famous for their chunky cookies. I'm talking thickums, the thickest cookies that you will ever see in your life. But here's my problem. I don't really like restaurants with fancy names because I will never go to them. Imagine calling up your friend and be like, you want to meet me at Levian, Levain, Levon, Levon James. <laughs> Luvin, Luvin, Luvon. <laughs> and the recipe is from a YouTube channel called Taram Table. And we're just gonna get started. This is probably by far the worst recipe I could have ever chosen for a bacon and mystery because first of all, um, I'm gonna be using my stand mixer the whole time, Woo! which it's gonna be so loud. And then I'm gonna be baking the cookies the rest of the time. So what am I here for? Absolutely nothing, okay? I'm gonna be the most useless human. I'm not even gonna be cooking most of the time. Before we get started, you know, you've had those moments where you're like, wait, no, that's not, that's not what I meant. What I meant to say was, no, I think that there was some miscommunication because the problem lies with my vocabulary. I think a better word for that should have not been ugly. Maybe unacceptable? You have those moments, but with Grammarly, I don't have those moments anymore because everything that I say is concise. Everything that I write in an email or a Google Doc or even text to my friends or if I want, I can tweet it all with the help of Grammarly. And I know for a fact that I'm going to be writing clearly and confidently because Grammarly has real-time feedback, guidance on tone, word choice, clarity, and more with Grammarly Premium. That's the one that I specifically use. The reason that I started using Grammarly Premium to begin with is because I would have all of this tension when I was responding to emails. Sometimes it's professional. And I would just freak out over, oh, do you think that this sounds professional enough? Do you think I'm using the right tone? Do you think they're getting the message across? And he says, listen, babe, you need to get it together. You need to be a big girl. Put your big girl pants on and download Grammarly Premium. And honestly, it's changed my life. I write more concise. I write clearer. I have these sentences that don't have any run on words. They're just straight to the point unlike me in real life. Honestly, it's the perfect tool for anyone who wants to stand out in your writing. If you are writing an email to your professor, a Google Doc, maybe you're writing a straight up essay or to your boss or a little about page for your small business website. You need to harness the power of Grammarly on every single platform. Do more than just a spell check. Say what you really mean with Grammarly Premium. Get 20% off your Grammarly Premium by signing up at Grammarly.com slash BAM. That's 20% off at G G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash BAM. So today's BAM is actually on Netflix called Girl From Nowhere. It's um, a Thai series and I'm obsessed with it. It's It kind of reminds me of Black Mirror, but a little bit lighter, but a little bit more fantasy, not as technological, with some thick plots. And it's all based on revenge. And it's all based around one singular character by the name of Nano. Oops. That's the butter. Now, what's interesting is that we're not going to be starting with the first episode because this series, it, she goes to a different school every single episode. It's a new school, a new plot line, a new group of people, a new revenge plot, all of that. So this specific episode is called... Um, High Society. I think that's what it's called. And it's so freaking good. So it starts with Nano and she is a high school girl just being introduced into her new transferred school by a teacher. And she's walking her through the classrooms, walking her through the hallways. And she says, well, this was the science room. This one's the textile room. This is for kids that are interested in fashion. And Nano's like, oh, these are so cool. What a nice school that you have, teacher. And she's like, but I just have one question. What are all of the names on the walls next to the rooms? The teacher's like, oh, well, that those are for the parents who um, they donated, they sponsored the rooms, essentially, and they made it happen. So they get their names right on the walls next to the room that they donated for. Huh. That's interesting. So Nano, this whole episode is really about what does money buy you? Does it buy you recognition? Does it buy you clothes? Does it buy you fancy things? Maybe it buys you a room. And so she straight up asks the teacher, well, how much does it cost to buy a room? Can I buy a room? Now you would think any good, well-thinking teacher would say, absolutely not, Nano, you're a student here. What, what in the hell would you need a room for? But the teacher's just straight up is like, 
yeah, let's fucking do it. So Nano shows up the next day, literally with an envelope stuffed with cash, hands it over to the teacher, and she slaps a Nano sign right next to that empty door. And she just starts revamping this room. I'm talking HGTVing this shit. And then we get introduced to the group of students. These are the rich kids in this school. And the richest of them all is a man by the name, well, a kid, a high school kid, by the name of Dino. And he's, he's really rich. You know he's rich because all of the students say, you don't really get to know him. He's like that type of rich. He's so mysterious. You don't really get to hang out with him either because he's always abroad. He's always going to the UK nonstop, always bringing back souvenirs. That's how freaking rich he is. I heard his house, his house has a garden and a pool and a golf course, and you could probably ride a horse around it because it's that big. Like you would take a horse to the tennis court, to the garden, to the pool, and back around and just horsey it up. That's how rich he is. Now, there's another guy by the name of Toe. He's also rich but not as rich, you know? And so there seems to be a little bit of jealousy there. They're always like competing, who's bringing the most souvenirs back from their abroad trips. It's always Dino, plot twist, right? So they're talking and all of a sudden they're like, did you see the new girl? What new girl? Nano, she's filthy rich. She bought a room her first day here. Is that not crazy? But what, 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 that doesn't even make sense. I mean, yeah, I get it when our parents buy rooms because they want to be fancy, but why would a kid, why would a student need their own room? What is she going to use it for? And in walks, yes, timing is beautiful. In walks Nano. Oh my God, I almost sliced you, babe. <laughs> now you're going to add the cubed butter into, I will never look at butter the same, you know? I used to hate butter. In walks Nano. And the entrepreneur that she is, she straight up tells these rich kids, well, she bought that room to start her own business. In a school? Yeah. So they're like, what kind of business? And of course, like I said, timing is a bit, or did I say it was beautiful? Either way, it works both ways. The teacher walks in. So we don't get to know right away what Nano's business is. And they introduce Nano to the class. She's excited to be there. The teacher hands out their grades from the last semester. And one of the rich kids, he's pissed. I mean, his grades suck. Sounds like a personal problem, but he's pissed because his parents promised to buy him a motorcycle if he got good grades. But at the rate of this, he's gonna get a freaking scooter. Not even an electric one, just a straight up manual scooter. What a peasant thing to ride around town, right? So he's really mad and Nano says, well, that's perfect because that's what my business is. So why don't you come to my room after class and I'll get you a motorcycle. So they're like, okay, well, let's check out this new girl's room. So after class, they huddle into her room. She's got a little computer set up. She's got a printer. It's a whole office set up. And she says, let me see your report card. And she starts calculating some shit, and she gives a receipt. She says, this is my payment. This is how much I want, and I can promise you a motorcycle. It's a small fee to pay. Don't you want a motorcycle? I mean, if you'd rather have a scooter, that's fine too. So of course he pays it up because he's a dumb rich kid. So she starts just shredding his report card, just full on shredding it. And they're all like, what are you doing? And she tampers with it and she prints him out a fully identical transcript, but this time with stellar grades. And he's freaking stoked. He's like, yes, I'm totally going to get a motorcycle. The next day, actually, he shows up to school in a new motorcycle. So now Nano has proven her credibility. She has really passed the mark. And she becomes this entrepreneur, consultant, private investigator, all of that to these group of rich kids. We're going to add the sugar. Okay, so we've got cane sugar. And then we also have brown sugar, which I'm excited about. You know what cookie's fancy when you need both the sugars? I mean, doesn't it really, it's just sugar, no? Never really learned how to use it. Was never plugged in. Ah, that's why it's not working. You should have told me that. Oh my god. Oh, that's good. That would have taken me three years, come on. Okay. So you want to churn it up until the butter chunks are gone and it's just like this really thickums dough. So she becomes this PI, just consultant, entrepreneur, the go-to man, the go-to woman for all of these rich kids at this school. So for one instance, I mean, this guy suspected that his girlfriend was cheating on him. So she hired, she was his PI, got a bunch of people to beat up the new, the new boyfriend. 
that girlfriend the cheating girlfriend there was a gay friend who was sick of his parents constantly telling him to date a girl so she hired a fake girlfriend for him to take home like she was doing it all and she was hired by every single one of them because you know they've got real life problems that need to be fixed except for Dino so this is bothering Nano because of, like I said you know she's an entrepreneur she's a CEO a girl boss an absolute hustler and so she approaches Dino one day in the classroom Who's and says Dino? the rich kid and the she's riches. like yeah the riches she's like Dino I just have a question is there anything I can help you with and he's looking at her and all of the students, they start laughing, the classmates, and they're like, no, no, nah, no, first of all, this guy's rich, he's loaded, he doesn't have a cheating girlfriend, he's got servants in his house, and second of all, his parents don't even live here, they're living in abroad right now, so he's pretty much got the whole house to himself, I mean... If you need help, Nano, Dino can help. It's not the other way around. And she gets a little bit bothered by this. She just wants to find out he's got to have some problem, right? Nobody's perfect. That doesn't make sense. And the rest of the kids, they don't care. They just keep talking on and on. And they're thinking, you know what? Since, the, since this topic is brought up about abroad, why don't we go abroad this weekend? Why don't we fly to, like, Bangkok or... That's fucking in Thailand. Why don't we fly to like, you know, somewhere foreign? I don't know. America, South Korea, somewhere out of the country. And Dino's like, ugh, I just, there's really nothing new or exciting to do. And they're like, well, that's what happens when you're rich. You fly out of the country too much that you're so bored of these foreign lands, right? And Nana's like, well, I have an idea. Dino, I've heard so much about your house. Why don't you invite us over? I want to see your house. So he's like, my house? Why? And she's like, I don't know. We can all just have a party. I mean, really? And everyone's like, yes, we want to see your house. We've never been to your house. This is crazy. And they all just get excited. And he's like, okay, I guess you guys are coming over. So that day after class, all of the kids get back into their car. Some of them take the bus. Some of them ride a motorcycle. But Dino gets picked up in a Mercedes by two guys in suits. This kid's not playing, okay? This is high school. I feel like in my high school, you would actually get bullied if you got driven around in a Mercedes with two dudes in suits. Really? It's a little weird. Who are you? I mean, I guess that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Just kidding. High school me would have been like, hey. <laughs> All right, now we mix. It's gone. I mean... Oh, you locked it again! <laughs> oh, just never lock it? Lock I'm just it. following the safety rules, <laughs> okay? I just want to say, what is the purpose of splitting the eggs up into three different parts? Hold on. I find that some... I feel like sometimes recipes are overcomplicated. So that you're like, I'm not going to make that shit. Let me just go and buy it from them. <laughs> An investment! <laughs> She said, f*** it. <laughs> All of them. Done. Okay, goodbye. So now we're gonna add the flour in two batches. This is the worst recipe for this video. My apologies. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a little bit odd. He, now, once he gets out of his car ride with these two men in suits in this Mercedes, here's another thing that's odd. They give him the price of his ride, which I think it's a little bit strange because if your family has, well, I don't know. I've never had this. But if your family has a chauffeur, I'm assuming that it's paid for, right? Yeah. But he pays them in cash. And then you see another odd thing. He doesn't get out in front of a beautiful mansion with a garden and a tennis... Uh, I was going to say a tennis table. That's a ping pong table. <laughs> a tennis court. He gets out in a really not so great area. And he walks in and he says, Hey, mom. Hey, dad. I'm home. And we see his house and it's, a, it's not a great house. His parents are actually working on the floor. It's cluttered with boxes. It seems like maybe they're working from home. His parents are definitely not wealthy, definitely not living abroad. And he just, they say, how is school? And he tells them a lie. He says, well, my friend's chauffeur dropped me off. And they're like, wow, you've got some nice friends at this rich school. It's a good thing you're hanging out with people who have connections. So he goes back into his room and he starts panicking. He's laying on his bed. And Dino's thinking to himself, there's got to be a way 
way that I avoid this because, you know, my friends, he's imagining they're going to come over. They're going to see this dump of a place. They're going to see his room and they're just going to make fun of him. I mean, these are rich kids that we're talking about. So he starts panicking and the panic only gets worse when he gets an alert on his group chat. They said that they already bought outfits for this dinner. What? They're excited. One of the girls said we should have a themed party. We should maybe dress up as like red carpet themes. We should do something. Oh my God, I'm so excited. When do you think that we can come over? When is this? Is it this weekend? Is it next weekend? When? Give us the date, Dino. And so he decides to do the only thing that he knows to do, which is to call Nano. And he asks her, anything I tell you, is it gonna be a secret? And she says, absolutely. All of my conversations with clients are strictly confidential. And he says, I want you to change my friends' minds. I want you to make them not want to come over to my house. Um, I don't think that'll be that easy. I just think it's one of those things, Dino, where you should just get it over with. Why? Why don't you want them to come over? And he says, well, I have valuables at my house and I don't really trust them yet, you know? I just don't wanna, like, I don't want them to break anything. I don't want them to mess around with anything. Do you think you can get them to change your mind? Or, or maybe, worst case scenario, do you think you can rent a house? I, I guess I can see what I can do. And she punches some numbers in her calculator and she says, yeah, but it's gonna be about $7,000 and I'm gonna need cash tomorrow. So he says, okay, yeah. Seven thousand dollars. Um, yeah, I'll 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 bring the cash tomorrow. Now you're gonna want to get a hundred grams of two different types of chocolate chips. We've got dark chocolate, and I also have these peanut butter chips. And so obviously, this kid, I mean, he's a high schooler, rich or not, he doesn't have $7,000. So he does what he does best or what most kids do best. And he goes downstairs and he starts snooping around and he finds his dad's wallet just laying there. And he decides this is his chance. He's got to do something. And he overhears the conversation that him and his dad, him and his mom are having, which is the fact that, um, that their loan shark is looking for their money. And they need to give the loan shark the money because this loan shark is known for killing people, for cutting off limbs of the debtors who don't pay back their money. So you're thinking, wow, this kid's at a crossroads. Is he gonna take his parents' money, the only amount of money that they have in their bank account so that they can be dismembered by a loan shark? Or is he just gonna fess up to his friends, right? You would think it's the latter, but no. He decides to steal the wallet in the middle of the night, head to the bank and withdraw every single penny, almost exactly $7,000 the parents had saved up to pay off these loan sharks. Now we're just gonna fold these together. I'm really tempted to eat this cookie batter. And so that day he goes to school with the $7,000 in cash. We're gonna need about 97 G's. I feel like I sound so cool. I'm like, we're gonna need $97,000. Um, no, 97 grams of cookie batter. <laughs> I'm gonna ball it up and then put it onto a cookie tray. Like a turd. Yeah, like a turd. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. I like it, it's cool. <laughs> so he shows up with the cash and Nano's like, perfect, you can actually see the house today. The next thing that I'll do is I'll be writing letters to everybody's parents saying that we're gonna be at camp right after school so that we can go to your house and we can party. So they're all like, yes, okay, sounds good. So they arranged to meet a couple days later and when Nano and um, Dino show up at the house really quickly before the rest of the party shows up, it's beautiful. It's got a garden. I mean, he's a little bit disappointed because he thought it was gonna be a little bit bigger, but he thinks this is gonna do, it'll just have to do. So they all dress up, the kids get there and Dino at this point, I mean, he's really soaking it in. All the kids are so impressed. They're like, why does everything look like this? What is this? I can't believe you have a golf room. And he's just saying, You've never seen that before? You've never seen a golf room before? Where do you live? A peasant hill? You know? <laughs> so he's just laying it on thick and one of the kids is like, ooh, can I smoke a cigar? What's, what's this pile of cigars doing here? Can I smoke it? And Dino's like, yeah, go ahead. I don't care, smoke a cigar in my wonderful house. And Nano's like, wait, why don't you call the servants so that they can light the cigar for you? Right, Dino? Why doesn't he get the servants to do it? Call the servants, use the bell, just ring it. Isn't that how you call your servants, Dino? So he's like, okay, you got servants, cool. So he picks up the bell and he rings it and dressed in a maid, full on maid costume and a suit, out walks Dino's parents. They had taken on an extra job. And the parents had no idea? Had no idea, they were hired by Nano. 
freaking Nano planned this whole thing. So it seems like Nano likes to fork around with people, right? That's the whole vibe. She likes to teach kids a lesson. This was definitely written by an adult. <laughs> okay? And so the parents come out and you're thinking, oh, sh it's going to go down, but they actually go along with it. The parents don't want to embarrass Dino in front of his friends. They're actually really understanding. They probably get what it feels like to be in a school like this with all of these rich kids. So they're like lighting these cigars. Oh, dinner's ready. They get uh, escorted into this beautiful dining hall. They all sit down. They're eating their dinner. And one of the rich kids, we'll just call him annoying brat. He starts asking the servants, quote unquote servants. They keep calling them servants in this episode. Get the whiskey. And so, of course, Dino's dad starts pouring things. But once they take a sip, they realize it's not freaking whiskey. So he gets pissed. He's like, excuse me, servant dude. I asked you for whiskey and you poured me water. Explain. And he's like, I, I just think that you guys are not of age to be drinking whiskey. You know, because this is Dino's dad. Mm -hmm. And the kid gets pissed. He's like, Dino, can you believe it? Who asked for your opinion? You're a servant. Pour the whiskey. And there's like this just moment of silence and you're thinking, Dino, come on, now it's the time to be a man. But he says, yeah, get the whiskey. So the dad starts pouring up the whiskey and then they have multiple courses and the whole time these rich kids are acting like, well, how you would assume rich kids would act. They're just being absolute brats. This one's really chocolate chippy. Is this even a cookie or is it all just chocolate chips? I call that one. You call that one. <laughs> That's the one you want. Dibs on that one. Ooh. So this makes approximately, um, well, that's some quick math, seven one-pound cookies. You know like how burgers are sold by quarter pounder, one pounder? This is a one-pound cookie. So now you're just going to, oh, let me give you guys a lowdown on what they look like. Now you're just going to pop these beautiful turds into the oven <laughs> at 390 degrees for only 12 minutes questionable but i believe i trust the process 12 minutes later honey dinner is served <laughs> just housewife things for the audio people it's burnt it's burnt oh. so bad oh, oh no oh my God. Oh my okay God. yeah no we can't even eat that I that is I just want to Okay, taste just it. take one bite. I'll take one bite as well. I didn't mess up. It was 390 degrees. I didn't even do the full 12 minutes. I think I did about 10 because I smelt the smell. It tastes burnt. Never mind. So we're just going to put that back here. Act like it doesn't exist. So anyways, they're at this dinner. They're drinking this whiskey. They even pull out some joints. Yeah, they're full on smoking weed. They also start um, drinking red wine. And again, Dino's parents are just sitting there watching this entire thing take place. And eventually the kids decide, let's hit this. Let's hit a different room. Let's go and do some fun stuff. So they end up in the office and they decide, hey, Look what we found. Well, specifically, Nano finds a handgun. And she says, we should do something with this. Something fun. So all of the rich kids decide, what's more fun than putting in $6,000 each into the pot, right? They, ha they don't have the cash on them, but eventually they will. And that's about 40,000 US dollars, right? And each person, they're only going to put one bullet into this revolver, are going to shoot their arms. And the person who gets shot gets $40,000. I don't know, bro. I don't know if it's just me and the United States healthcare system, but the amount of medical fees, trauma, what the fork, yeah, well, lifelong like, trauma, anything, possible yeah. amputation, but they decide this is fun. We're high school kids, let's do it. So they decide all of them are gonna do it. They start passing around this gun. I started the microwave. <laughs> they started passing around this gun one by one. The first, I opened the microwave. <laughs> what? The first two kids, they shoot themselves in the arm and the bullet doesn't come through. They got an empty casing, right, in the revolver. And they seem disappointed that they didn't shoot their arm. It's really confusing. When it gets to Nano's turn, she puts the gun straight to her head. And before all the high school friends are like, no, she pulls the trigger. And thankfully, there was no bullet. So they keep passing it round and round. And finally, it was the last one. 
Dino's turn. I mean, it's obvious it's going to be a bullet because I don't see them like taking it out and like spinning the revolver again, right? The barrel. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be now it's the bullet. I mean, this is how probability works. And they keep telling him you should do something fun. Don't do your arm, do your leg. Put it inside your mouth. All of these crazy things. What? And that is when Dino's dad comes storming into the room and he's given a whole lecture. He's saying, you know what? I've been pent up about this, about the weed that you guys are smoking, about the whiskey that you guys are drinking. I mean, how? What are you doing with this gun right now? Dino, put the gun down. You guys are disgusting. Your parents raised you. They work hard to feed you, put food on the table. And this is your respect for your life? And of course, one of the kids decides, what are you? You're a servant talking to me? And so he goes up to Dino's dad and starts beating him to a pulp in anger. So Dino starts freaking out, but he's in this crossroads of, do I let my dad die or uh, do I expose myself? Honestly, these aren't really even options that you should be weighing. And if you even thought about it for two seconds, go punch yourself in the face. Thank you. But he starts weighing these options. And before he has to make a decision, his mom rushes into the room and she starts yelling at this kid who is now beating her husband to a pulp. And he decides, I'm going to retaliate and beat her to a pulp until Ooh. both of Dino's parents are laying on the ground completely bloody. And the kids are looking at each other. What do we do now? They're not dead, right? So the next scene cuts to like a very dramatic scene of Dino getting into a cab, getting back home, reliving the whole event. And he walks into his house and he turns on the light. And he says, Mom, Dad, and you're almost thinking, maybe he thinks this is a dream. Maybe he's hoping for the best, right? But the camera pans over, and his parents are bloodied, bandaged, and eating dinner. And they say, did you eat, son? And he sits down, and he starts eating, and they say, how was camp? Camp was good. They don't want to talk about it. They're pretending? Yeah. And the mom says, I forgot to pack you your mosquito repellent. Sorry about that. And then we get a flashback. So the flashback was at the party. The parents are all bandaged up. And the rich kids decide to put together, I think, $15,000, 15000 USD, putting it into a bag and asking the parents, is this enough to keep you silent? Is this enough to buy your silence? And they said yes. And they took the bag. So I think it's a moment of both the parents are ashamed and the kid is ashamed. And at the end, the episode ends with the parents asking, you're going to tell us again, right? If you've ever got camp, right? And he says, yes. I'll let you know if we ever have camp again. So, because the parents want more I money? I don't know. See, that's an open ending. Do they want more money? Are they willing to go through this for more money? Is that the vibe you're getting? Kind of. Because it's not like a soft lecturing so it's, vibe. It's like the feeling of like the parents also gave in at the end because of money. Yeah because they had to, because of their circumstances. So it's like this very strange vibe so of they're not gonna Nano, talk about what it. What did Nano do this episode? Nano was just putting him in a position where he had to decide what is he gonna do? Is he gonna keep up with this lie? Does he really care how much his friends think that he's rich? Or is he gonna be a good person? And she completely ruined his relationship with his family because prior to this, they had no idea that he was telling lies at school. They just thought, wow, well, he's so smart and he's making good friends and we're so glad that we're putting all of our money, every penny, taking out loans from loan sharks to put him into this wonderful school. And now that relationship is ruined. Nano's kind of evil, huh? Nano's kind of evil in an interesting <laughs> way. But you you could say Dino's evil. I mean, yeah, sure, the Nano first... Yeah, what Nano did was extreme. The first initial step that Nano took was extreme. But all the steps afterwards, you know, you just can't root for Dino. He's just a butthole. I honestly had two more episodes. But this kitchen, I'm... I'm surprised we haven't set out the smoke alarms. I'm breathing in carcinogens. I gots to go. <laughs> that, that over there, poison. Don't make these cookies in the way that I've made them. Refer to a recipe, refer to a cooking channel. Who am I? I'm nobody. Don't listen to me. Look at my turds over there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. <laughs> if you guys want me to do more Girl From Nowhere, I'm going to have a couple of book bams coming soon. I'm working on. Here's a little spoiler alert. I got a pre-released version. A pre-release. No, is that what you call it? 
Am I flexing? Remember the very first BAM that I ever did, The Silent Patient? The author that I loved, the one book that I was like, oh my god, I loved every single word of this book. Well, they said they saw that video and they sent me a pre-release version of his second book, of their second book. Of their second and you're gonna book. you're going to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about it <laughs> when I legally can. I'm excited. That's coming up. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And I'll probably see you guys tomorrow in a hopefully non-burnt house. And thank you. Bye.